All right, so we just had a chat with Tristan, a uh, really cool view on the future of advice, um, where he sees it going is for himself at least. He wants to take it down a path of self-improvement, you know, sort of that whole life journey, how can I fix every area of my life along with financial planning, which I've heard a lot of people talk about over the years, but for the six or seven years that I've known Tristan, he's been pretty stuck on it and uh, he's been doing it. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a journey to get here. I've been financial planning for, you know, about five or six years. Uh, in that time, he's held a bunch of retreats that were non-financial planning focused and uh, he sort of built him built himself up to a point that now he can uh, combine these two worlds. Um, Dover, he was a part of Dover as well, which was uh, pretty, we sort of duck into that for a little bit and talk about how uh, how it all unfolded for him and he, and he had a great result in the end actually. So uh, hopefully you enjoy and uh, yeah. Hub24 is an ASX listed company with over $10 billion funds under management and one of the fastest growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 is the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market leading managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com. Tristan, what's happening, mate? Clayton. Um, so much is going on at the moment. Um, but I'm in that suspense zone, right? Yeah. Just before our first bub arrives. Crazy. Look, I mean, considering everything, uh, thank you so much for coming in. Um, you were talking about just before how you, you're you in a really good headspace for all this to unfold. Um, talk, to, talk to me, you know, f- about that. Oh, the personal side of things. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I could talk all day. Just stop me when you need to. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we've been married for six years, six mm. and a bit years now, and it's been an amazing wild ride, my wife and I, Renee. Um, and uh, we fell pregnant in February, just sort of 10 days after we started the business. Wow. Um, so it's been a kind of exciting year on many fronts, but it's also been the turning point for our relationship. So without going into too much of the details up front, um, we've had like a lot of ups and downs and conflict, and both of us really like we're, we, we love pressing into relationships we love trying to press into conflict yeah and um, anyone that's married knows how absolutely how tight you can get right yeah, of course um but we've had some real rough years the last few and this year i think especially once the baby arrived it shifted the game quite a bit we'd both done a lot of work last year i think the groundwork was sort of sort of put in place but um after about three months of really rough morning sickness on my wife's front um which was a good thing because it forced her to stop and rest and care for herself and a belly. Um, we had a lot of quality time together. I got to care for her and realized how selfish I am. <laughs> when someone's dependent on you for the first time, you realize how annoying it can be to have to do something <laughs> that's not just for you. Um, and, you know, whilst trying to build the business as well. And then the last sort of six months have just been like, close to bliss. Like, awesome connection, real collaboration. We're working together much better than we ever have, both on the business professionally, but also just like logistically and um, and had a lot of support from community. Like a lot of people love the idea of having a baby in their world and they'll get it involved more and there's supportive friends and family, everything you could want, right? Yeah, man. Wow, it's a beautiful thing you just said. Look, absolutely, whenever you get two imperfect people decide to spend a fair bit of time together, otherwise known as their entire life, then, uh, yeah, you, you're definitely going to get some ups and downs. So completely understand what you mean by that. Um, and, and so during all this time... Your pregnancy, starting a business, Dover. Oh, yeah. Dover happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, you want me to just riff on that? Mate, go for it. Yeah, well, so I, I s- conceived this idea of the business about 18 months before I kicked it off. So at back end of 2016, and I started February 2018. And um, I had a lot of vision for what it would, it would feel like. I, I'd written down like three or four business plans and then the licensee piece sort of came together in the last few months. I spent six months of research and looking into things. End of 2017, there was a lot more content coming out about different licensees and what's available and advisor rating started doing a bit more stuff and XY started like talking about it all the time. Yeah. I think it was a hot topic. Yeah. Um, so that was helpful. But um, I sort of narrowed down my 
pick of six to two and it was Synchron and Dover. And then because I wanted to do both the, the financial advice and the life coaching together, um, it pretty much meant that Dover was one of the only few businesses or groups that were willing to accommodate it and, and do it cost effectively. And and I think I just liked it. I liked the way Dover operated. I met met Terry in December. We sat down together. Um, Terry McMasters, that is. He's, he was the director. Yes. Most people probably know of him by now. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and to be honest, like, there was a lot of things that um, that meeting meant to me. But I felt like he fathered me for yeah. a good 30 minutes. Like, he, he sat me down and he, he talked talk me through the story of what he was like when he was 30 and started his business. He really listened to me of what I was wanting to do. He loved the idea of the life coaching piece. He gave me some very practical tips of how to make sure I could ensure certain components of it were still tax deductible for my clients and seemed to really get the methodology behind how I was trying to approach advice. And um, and he, he seemed genuine in, in the fact that he, wants to, or he wanted to um, provide a streamlined, compliant, but simple um, process of advice for clients across the board. And um, it took a few months for me to realize that although that was probably his genuine vision, there was just a few issues in the way he'd approached it. And um, one of those issues I would say is that there was um, there was animosity, I guess, between he and the business and, and elements of industry and ASIC, which to his credit, he was one of the gutsy ones willing to... to challenge some conceptions in the last few years of how, how advice should be done, how SOAs should be done. You know, they got their SOAs down to like 10 pages on average. Um, it was beautiful. It's so good to be able to generate something that nice. And, and he was very critical of how the industry had 60 to 100 page documents and how ASIC had allowed that. And, and I, I agree with a lot of those points, but I think there was a lot of other issues where he'd kind of taken that, you know, the rogue position of backing a few underdogs um, didn't look good in ASIC's eyes. And look, there's there's a lot of details that to this day, I still don't know how it all panned out. But from what I gather, um, there was this one document, the client protection policy, which was not a client protection policy, um, which was the the reason why ASIC was shut down. So why, sorry, why Dover was shut down by ASIC. And there wasn't any further detail other than that. And, um, and the implication for me was that four months in, um, I had no licensee. Wow, I could just imagine, man. Um, and, and talk to us about wh- what did you do? What because because obviously this happened to a, a what was it four hundred advisors? Yeah, yeah, close to that. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was actually quite funny. So there's a, a really quality bloke in the XY community um, called Arcadius Brill. You might know him. I have met him. Good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, so we'd hung out a couple of times at events, and um, we knew we we're in each other's licensee. That was about it. We hadn't actually had a sit down catch up yet. But it was 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock or so on Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and um, he gave me a call. I'm like, oh, Arcadia, it's cool. How you doing? He's like, how are you feeling, Tristan? I'm like, oh, I'm feeling fine. How about you? He's like, what do you mean you're feeling fine? What did you think about the email? I said, what email? <laughs> Read your emails. <laughs> so I looked on it at 401. I'd received this email from Terry McMaster saying that, um, or was it from Adrian? Or from Dover, at least saying that, yeah, my license is, is now revoked. I can't give any more advice, and I have a month until uh, I will no longer even be licensed with Dover, but even though I'm still licensed, I can't do anything with it. So, um, yeah, look, I've, I'm quite a resilient, optimistic, naive personality. You probably would have picked that up from the, the time we spent <laughs> together at the A&B Horizons Academy. Hola. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, look, it was, it was like surprise and intrigue and, oh, what does that mean? And um, it kind of hit me within half an hour. And then I went on and watched the Royal Commission and again in detail and um, tried to read what I could read. And it was an amazing seven days following that. Um, the, the nutshell of it was um, I received so much support. Like, I, I mean, 20 to 30 quality advisors who I didn't even know um, who would have just called in out of the blue and said, hey, I heard you were struggling. How are you doing? Can I help? Most of them couldn't do a thing. They just, they just called to say hi. You know, um, Clayton, you, you put a really great post on over the weekend and you like rallied all the Dover guys together, rallied all the non-Dover guys together to support the Dover guys. It was, it was like, it felt like family. <laughs> um, and that was why I chose Dover. I was looking for, for family and yeah. I'd kind of half found it. Um, and so even though it didn't sort of work out, um, it was a beautiful transition out. Wow, and, um, man. The, the last bit of detail I want to share is there's a wonderful guy called Glenn Killen. Um, I only met him once before as well, uh, but he remembered me from four months beforehand. He gave me a text that Saturday, the day after, and said, hey, I think you should speak to my licensee. And uh, a number of uh, steps later, um, 
after four business days, because it was a public holiday on the Monday, so the following Monday after that, um, I had a new license and I was able to give advice again. So no I was only way. Down for four business days. Whoa. Isn't that amazing? That is such an amazing man. That's a wild ride. Though. Oh, wild. Yeah. That's a four I, months I know, it in. It might be a record. Is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that the quickest turnover? That is phenomenal. Wow. It's great to hear. It's great to hear a first hand account because, um, yeah, actually, I've caught up with, with Arcadius. What a great name, by the way. My oh, yeah. goodness. I just, once I learned how to pronounce it, I, I'm going to name every single child I ever have for the rest of my life, Arcadius. <laughs> just capitalized. Yeah, letters, right? definitely. <laughs> um, but, in, in, but, mate, it's so good to hear, to hear um, that you rebounded well. Um, I, w- I want to actually touch on your style of uh, investment management, your style of, I should say, actually more accurately, financial advice. Mm-hmm. If we go back to the AMP Horizons days where we first met, um, you, you definitely had uh, a more holistic view of what advice could be than anyone else that I was talking to. And you, and I, I want to know if you're still looking at doing this because back then it was a concept of, you know, you could do weekends away and it would take into account different aspects of who you are as a person and it was very much a, a life improvement along with the monetary side of things, which was something that, oh, man, I fell in love with. I was, I was thinking if you can pull this off, it would be amazing. Mm. Um, how much of that has survived and how much of this are you doing now? Oh, I still agree that if I can pull it off, it will be amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm still super passionate about it, Clayton. Awesome, man. Um, so I feel we're along the, along the journey. We've taken a few steps down that road. And when I, I started the business, um, I moved from employment land. Um, I'd been very flexibly employed by an awesome boss um, who kind of gave me the keys and let me explore with things, let me be unprofitable for a whole first year. Really. Wow. Um, learn, learn the skills in depth in, in his camp and um, on the back end of my Horizons experience. And then, yeah. you know, probably spent three years um, at least covering my costs for the business and bringing a bit of profit in, but um, pushing all the boundaries, trying new software, testing a bunch of stuff. And, and he came along for the ride at least halfway. And by the end of my employment, it was clear that I had a different direction towards advice plus coaching a life coaching that is, and, and he wasn't so keen on that. He was supportive, but he wanted to, to continue building the business as it was built. So I, it, it was a sad thing for me for, to branch out, but it meant that I was able to then start this company with my full intention at the fore. So it was a, a life coaching and first and then a financial advice business second. Um, and that's in theory, because in practice, people come to me for financial advice. And, and that's the place I think a lot of us find ourselves in, people with a similar mindset. So um, I don't know. Maybe maybe throw me a question. What what is it you're interested to hear at the moment? Man, a couple of things. So uh, I'd I'd like to know if you've done any retreats yet. Oh, so yes, we have. Cool. Um, not under the Purpose Advisory brand yet. Yeah, we, we've been doing those for three years, um, my wife and myself, either as couple retreats, women's retreats, or men's events. Um, and um, they're both pre-married and also married couples as well. But um, our first Purpose Advisory retreat is coming up next year in January. Um, so first time, which I'm so stoked to hear mm. because I mean, we, we would have chatted about this seven years ago yeah. or to the effect of yeah. six, six, seven years, <laughs> six ago. years ago. So, um, so I want to know what, what, what have you been doing? So that's non financial advice getaways. Yeah. And then how is this going to look for the purpose advisory getaway? Yeah. Okay. So, um, with the, the the retreats we've done in the past, to be honest, it was just a way to keep our marriage healthy. We just did getaways with the other mates. Um, some people we didn't know, actually, just people we knew were in a similar stage as us and said, let's let's make a structured weekend. Either a friend of ours had a place up the coast or Airbnb did. And um, my wife and I would design a curriculum or just throw together some thoughts, pull in some books, some key concepts, a few tools. And then run them through. And we, we ran maybe four or five like that. And uh, my wife is pretty prolific with that sort of thing in the, the female empowerment space. She does a lot of community work and just like every week, every month now, she runs an event for women, probably just an hour, uh, sorry, a four hour session in the afternoon. Um, so we've got a lot of practice and experience running events. And I've been running evening workshops on a close to monthly basis for a few years. Topic. Various topics. Right. Um, whilst I was employed, I tried to make them financial oriented because they were under the banner of my employer. But these days, like we, we did one last week on how to design a life you love, a guide for millennials. Wow. Um, that was fun. We, we've done a couple on um, like preparing for marriage with your money. 
um, or just how to do marriage, how to do relationships and money well. Um, so look, any kind of topic you could want, anything to do with the fulfilled life. Yeah. That's the, the central point. So when it comes to the retreat we're doing next year, it's, um, it's not kind of like, you know, come for 10 days and we'll change your life sort of thing. It's much more a scoped component of what I've started to develop as our process, our, our life fulfillment process. So this one event, I've um, partnered with a mentor of mine, an uh, awesome guy called Martin Hume Cobb. He's uh, my relationship coach. He's built a lot of his own content. Um, he's 60-something, 60, 60 um, early 60s, and um, he's, he's just a, a genius but also really grounded, creative personality. So um, I've run events with him in the past around this idea of who are you, like what are your vision, your values, your core beliefs, your emotional drivers, and understanding the human condition, how do humans tick, um, and your strengths and passions. And those components kind of make you up. And then if you're going to build a life that really sings, a fulfilled life, you want to align it to those things and get more clarity on those things. So we'll be kind of creating space for those that come along to explore those elements of themselves, to learn a bit about themselves, and then map it to some sort of visioning system where they can see a picture of who they are 10 years from now. And then ideally start bringing their life on track with that vision 10 years out. Wow, man. That sounds really hard to do. How do you even advertise for something like that? Like, how do you draw in uh, a a guest list? How do you, how do you, uh, you know, do you advertise on Facebook and say something to the effect of, do you know what your purpose in life is? If, if not join us on this weekend getaway? Like, is that, how do you drum up business like that? It's a great question. And it's not one I'm the pro on and I haven't answered it properly. Right. Um, I probably come from the the point of view of if I build it, they will come. <laughs> that foolish position to stand in. And um, I've been I've been supported by a, a base of about 50 clients at the moment. Sure. Um, who I built. But I, I took half of my clients from the previous company I was working in. Understood. And I've sort of had about 12 new clients come on this year um, as we've been working away at things. And they've mostly come from referrals or affiliated networks or people just drop in through our referral channels. Um, and I wouldn't say I'm by any means um, savvy on the psychology of marketing fulfillment. If anything, I'd ask the question more than you would, like how do you possibly market that? It's such a it's such an esoteric concept. People don't even know what fulfillment means, um, let alone do they even really want it. Yeah, I think it's a difficult subject, although uh, people like Tony Robbins have you know, built a very sustained and long-term career on this exact subject. So it, it's it's not that it can't be done. And he's even done a, a pretty good book on money, surprisingly. I, I don't really have much of an exposure to, to what he's done beyond his book on money. I know that he teaches people to work on fire or something. But, um, but his book on money was actually not too bad. Um, so it, there's definitely a market there. Yeah. Um, it's I, I would imagine it might be difficult to attract clients, but then is it really? I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm doing a I'm doing a marketing series actually uh, for the XY podcast at the moment, and uh, Ben Nash uh, talks about how one of his uh, greatest ways to gain clients is to get referral partners, and these could be anything uh, from a uh, you know. Uh, uh, an office of um, of lawyers or, or HR specialists or, or like associations, I should say, who who get him in to speak, and he does a lot of workplace presentations. Great, um, and then from there he'll do an hour hour presentation, um, and then at you know afterwards there's a there's a call to action. You know, download his X Y Z. Um, and those people then fall into a, a, an email funnel, which he then emails, you know, consistently as in come to more workshops or uh, book in a time to speak to him. Um, but because he's done so well and he's, he's worked out a way to make, uh, you know, make some headways in, in the media, now he gets a lot of inbound. Great. So he, he spent a couple of years really focused on outward bound until he got enough sort of ma- critical mass, you could call it, of attention that now it starts coming inwards. Um, but I always think uh, if, if I was going back, you know, back to 2013 when I kicked off my business, um, I would definitely pursue something like that because it is it's very easy to, to generate. Um, especially with, on LinkedIn, you, you, can, you can generate a, a database of emails pretty easily. 
um, and then literally just sending people out stuff. Because the way that he started was quite rudimentary. It was c- connect with 100 people, say, do you want my thing? Uh, here it is. Y- you know, like it was very outward focused. And then over four or five years, that's now converted into him on Sunrise and people are coming coming inbound. So it, it's, 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 always, it's always uglier mm. at the beginning before you get critical mass. Um, but it's 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 replicable. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. And, and there's a there's a proven model in place. I don't know if you're familiar with the brand Success Resources. No. You mentioned Tony Robbins. Like Success Resources would probably be the global distribution platform for these various speakers, um, including Robert Kiyosaki and all the other big names. You know. Right. And um, that's how they pull these crowds. They they outsource to this group. Right. And, um, it's it's predominantly Facebook marketing. Yeah. Um, right. With a free weekend uh, or free day event with you know various platinum upgrades so they get a little bit of revenue for those events anyway yes sell a lot of those events and then what they're upselling to is the next tiers and it's a multiple tier model and um inevitably that's kind of the way it will go um but there's something within me that is the perfectionist that just wants to get i think i want to get confident to be honest i'm a 30 year old um i've stepped into a, a big pair of shoes and although i feel like i can help anyone from a financial point of view, and uh, that that took a lot of hard work to get to five years of you know sixty plus hours a week, um, and passionate focus at it, and I'm now really wanting to feel that level of confidence with the the greater life side, um, and I think part of that is going through this process of having a child and feeling like we're we're really owning various elements of my life before I probably feel confident enough to step out. And it's funny how, you know, we, we know all the theory, we, we kind of got the work ethic, but if we don't have the confidence there, we've got these limiting beliefs that kind of stop us from taking steps. And, and to be fair, just reflecting on it now, I think that's one of the main reasons why I've held back putting a lot of this stuff out there or engaging with a proper marketing channel. Yeah, that, 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 that hits on a very, very deep thing. I think men in our generation, maybe we're, you know, I'm 35, so a couple of years older than you, but it gets, it gets harder and harder. I think for, for men, uh, the younger that, that they are simply not, not because the world is difficult because obviously the world's not difficult for them, but to understand their place. I I think there's a, there's been a, a, you know, the world's changed a lot. Mm. And for, for, I think the confidence that uh, perhaps that our fathers or grandfathers had at our age far exceeds what the confidence is that uh, a man um, at our age would have now, which, you know, th- there's definitely an argument that just says ignore it, you know, just keep going. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, n- I, I think, I think we're probably more self-critical as well. Yeah. Um, than, than previous generations because there was no time to be self-critical. It was like, you know, you, by the time you're 12 years old, you're working full time on on the family farm or whatever, and there was no sort of introspection, you know, going on. Um, but there's a lot of time now to to gauge, I think, where we all sit in in the hierarchy of life. Well, there's so much more benchmarking going on. Absolutely, you can't just be the the big fish in a little pond. Yeah, correct. Like you can't even be about. a little fish in a little pond now. <laughs> Right, like, because a little fish in a little pond is like, okay, that's okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm that guy, and that's the community. But to be a little fish in a little pond now, um, y- you're just overwhelmed by Instagram and Facebook, and to to constantly judge yourself on how you're going up against the rest of the world, it's 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 a hard it's a hard measure. It's 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 a hard to live up to. And I think, fuck it, like don't. I, I eventually I just had to get to that point. Like I don't particularly like my the sound of my voice. You know I think it's probably you know an oc- not an octave but but a key perhaps or two higher than it needs to well, be. Well, man, you're picky. You, uh, you no, got a decent voice. But 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 like it's like nice resonance. It's nah, nice kind of like yeah. a slightly tenor tone. Yeah, you know <laughs> I, I listen to a lot of the, the podcasts that I do and I'm not particularly happy with them. But I think it fuck it. Like yeah. it, it doesn't matter. Um, just do it anyway. And you, know you can get like a, a pallet on the roof of your mouth and shift the intonation, right? <laughs> <laughs> I might do that. $1,400. Yeah. So, mate, I like uh, considering you, you've probably got more experience doing this than, uh, than anyone else that I know. So, why wouldn't you just go do it? Do it, man. I sense the encouragement and I, I appreciate it. And, um, and to be honest, some of it is literally just limiting belief. 
Yeah. There's um. Don't worry about that. But there's there's something else in the picture though, and this is to do with the. I think the block in our industry is there's like this there's this old hat. Let's just generalize for a sec. Older generation who's who's moving on, who's losing. I heard fifteen percent of their book value overnight because of all these like grandfather commissions disappearing. Yeah, at minimum. At, at a minimum. And then there's kind of the the new wave, and again generalizing here. And I feel there's a gap in between the two. There's a gap for a few reasons. Firstly, there's actually an age gap in between those two demographics. But secondly, there's a lack of mentoring that I felt um, from that older generation. You know, back at Horizons, we were we were taught by these guys, and um, you could pinpoint some of these names as well. And they were they were fun, they were charismatic, they were very talented. And man, could they sell? You know, and, and I suck at sales generally, so I learned a lot from them, and I'm much better now because of it. Yeah. Did I learn from their ethics and values to some extent? But the way they did business does not align with the way I do business. Sure. And um, that's something I'm really particular about. And so when looking to remodel my business structure, it's like, where do I draw from? Like, who, who do I look to? Who's got an example? And I've I've been grasping at straws and I found them. Man, I've, I've dug hard, but I did find them. And um, I feel that's partly why we lack confidence because we don't have like this, um, this sort of idea of a, a, a trodden path. Yeah, you know, like I heard this story once of the <laughs> sounds a bit sort of romantic, but these these bears that walk the same track through the the northern Canadian wilderness, and they've been walking it for centuries, and it's like it's so worn that the the stone itself is sort of gr- engraved with their footsteps. Isn't that beautiful? That is. And so you know, it's young little cubs when they come along to do their migration, yeah. they know exactly what to walk. Yeah, and I think any not just any man, but every any young person who desires greatness gets excited by that. There's a part of us that's the broken rebel who wants to do it ourselves, who wants to prove to the world that we got what it takes. But deep down, we know we're only great because of the shoulders we stand on. And we're only going to achieve what we can because we're going to learn from the wisdom of of those beyond us. And just to put a name out there, so Jordan Peterson, man, changed my life this year. Um, I've had a lot of mentors. I mentioned a few names already in this chat. But since like March, when I came across Jordan Peterson, are you familiar with the guy? Yeah, he's big on YouTube. Yeah, big yeah. on YouTube. Man, it's like he's big in my books as well. Like he's he's just a, a genius. He knows his stuff. He, he's got like clinical scientific science background. So it's a clinical psychology, I should say. But he um he has a depth of experience in his own relationships as a studier of people's relationships and then from a like evolutionary biology point of view brings so much more insight and and his almost single-handedly responsible for opening up all these long-form conversations that a lot of young people can now engage with, learn from, topics they wouldn't have ever brought up with their parents, probably wouldn't have had another figure like an uncle or a mentor to ask about, and now they can listen to him for hours, not just him, but people he podcasts with, and, you know, there's the, what do they call it, the intellectual dark web or something like that, or it's kind of this community of like-minded people who have these kind of progressive views, kind of traditional, but definitely looking to, to push the envelope of truth. That's the crux. What these guys are wanting to do, and this is why I'm passionate about it, they, they're they hungry for truth. And if they speak on stage, they're not just dribbling out stuff they know. They're asking themselves the question that's at the peak or the edge of their understanding and trying to wrestle it through with an audience. And when they have interviews with each other or do they do these podcasts, they're trying to go, what what's at the very limit of what I know and what's the question that will take me beyond it? And they don't know where they're going to get to, um, but they're courageous enough to do it and then they invite you along for the ride. And this is this it, it, is it that subject that you want to intertwine with financial advice, the pursuit of truth. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. So so, so you're interested in taking people away on retreats or giving people uh, life coaching and life advice that's along this line, intertwined with a financial plan. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. With with a rigorous, uh, accountable, needing to produce results in the real world world framework. Yeah. Um, but with a clear direction of where we're seeking truth. And if truth means, like I had a, a couple of clients who just a few months ago were courageous enough to pack up everything and head over to Italy, mm. start from scratch. And they're, they're Aussie kids, you know, like she's got Italian roots, but what does that mean? She got the passport. That's it. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know those situations? I know the situation. I've got a French passport. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, both had good jobs, earning good money. We got them their first investment property. We'd, we'd kind of got them a budget and they were saving and they had insurance and they were kind of excited. They're like, he's, he's a real green personality. He loves order. He's got the most mammoth folder of every single document we've ever worked through. Wow. And so, so like set up 
and there's no contentment alongside it because deep down they knew that the work they were doing was not aligned to their individual passions. Wow. And as a family, it just wasn't the culture they wanted to be in. So they, they packed it all up and they're starting from scratch. And you were a part of this process. Yeah, shamefully. I, <laughs> I'm not responsible, but um, yeah, look, they, they'll... Um, They'll put the hat out and say they, they made the call, but yes. they were challenged by some of the conversations we had to, to really ask themselves, what are we pursuing in life? Man, I wrote a book pretty much a lot on this subject, uh, Fun Your Ideal Lifestyle, and that came about because I had multiple clients moved overseas. Right. And it's awesome, isn't it? It's, it's such a... I feel like I played less of a role than perhaps you. I think I've, I feel like you're probably more articulate in, in how you're helping your clients in that way. Um, I was very much a uh, – I, I separated myself from – I didn't really take it on as a life – I mean, it was a life coaching management sort of framework, yeah. but it probably wasn't articulated as well as you're putting it. So I would put it to them as, what do you want out of life? And then let's help you money match that. So it was kind of a bit simplified than than the way that you're you're engaging with it. So, but as a result, you know, even though it was a bit more surface, um, I had multiple clients that moved overseas and sort of pursued other things in life. Isn't it scary? <laughs> wow. Yeah. But, but power to the question. Like when you ask a powerful question and you created, I think you also need to create a context and be mindful of the environment you're creating for our clients, the people we work with. Like what are the what are the pre works we've done? What are the What's the level of authenticity we brought to it? Are we willing to share some of our issues up front and share our limitations and where we're wanting to progress but haven't yet? And are we are we really prompting them to stay on track, you know, when they get deviated by a distraction or by, like, a discomfort? Are we bringing them back on track for the conversation to let the, the question itself, you know, challenge their their direction and, and their sense of, of purpose? Yeah. Um, because we don't we don't really bring a lot to each other other than our example. But we embody concepts greater than ourselves, you know. The pursuit of truth is much bigger than me. Like people have been doing, it for, for, like people have been dying for it for, for generations. And if I was to list out all my favorite movies, yeah, they're definitely movies where someone was pursuing freedom or truth at the extent of risking their life for it. Um, and they're the ones that will, will get us, you know, like the brave heart kind of scene, you know, on the edge of our seat, ready to see them die, um, because they're doing it for something greater than themselves. And even though we're living in the the best part of the world, living kind of the cushiest lifestyle we could possibly live. Yeah, we agree. want to be part of that adventure. We all want that. And um, in some ways, I feel like my role is to invite people to that journey. Um, and and as a result, to sort of close this back to full circle, I, I feel a, an intense pressure of asking myself the same questions. Am I living this adventure myself? Because I don't want to be inviting to someone to a journey that I'm not on myself. Yeah, it's a really good point. Uh, Andrew Rocks uh, said to me once, he goes, we want, our, um, we want our clients to be financial success, financially successful so it only makes sense that we are as well. Right. And so, yeah, in, in order to be aligned with the advice that you're giving, if, if, you're, if you're walking down this path, which it sounds, it's a pretty tricky path, mm. but yeah, absolutely, you, you don't want to be disingenuous about it. You're going to have to do it. Um, mate... I take my hat off to you, and and so rolling that out a little bit further, um, we've we've spoken about this in the past about your concept of awesome advisor. Yeah, awesome. And so, does this is is the awesome advisor uh, a concept that is being birthed from your desire to take financial planning in a, in a different direction? Yeah, that's that's definitely part of it. And like, I know I'm resonating with the right kind of vibe from you here because what I see X Y advice as a platform has done is um, create a forum for these sorts of conversation and challenge where we're doing things and encourage us. Like, you know, it gets lonely, it gets hard. This stuff we're talking about can kind of kind of be demoralizing, but we feel supported. So yeah, that's part of my motivation to add to that, to kind of like put some support, some content, some frameworks to how people want to build businesses and say, this works, this doesn't work. This is this is good and this is not so good. I, I definitely want to do that. But to be honest, where Awesome Advisor came from was my own desire to generate a supportive community for me and my mm. passion, and and to set myself a few rules, like some housekeeping, you know, of how how does an ethical and a purpose driven business look? Advice business. Man, that's it's cool. It's cool. So so I think you'd I think you'd find a lot of ethical businesses out there now. Mm. I think I think a lot of advisors 
due to the backlash of, I mean, Royal Commission is just a symptom of a, of a, of a bigger problem. Um, I think a lot of advisors, a lot of advisors that I've seen have really strived to, to be above, above the fold or above the gray area. Um, and opening up new markets because of it. I think, I think the, the way that advice is headed and the way that client acquisition is headed right. is very it's much... an interesting one at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's very much uh, create credibility because mm-hmm. uh, that's a m- massive thing that our industry is lacking in at the moment. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of advisors do a lot of good things. Yeah, me too. I tell you what's crazy, man. Like, even though we've got this Royal Commission, it's still going on. There's all, all these things that are that are taking away from where I think advice should be focused. I'm surrounded day in, day out by really good advisors doing really good things. And when people come to me to ask for an advisor... Yeah, uh, too many options. <laughs> I, I, I literally have to go like dive into what it is that they want because Great. I've got probably five to ten at least mm. advisors that I can recommend out, and yeah. just depending on what it is, you know, what's the size of your income and what's the size of your assets, and how old are you, and what do you want out of life, and you know, do you have a business or not, and you know, it's it's and there's I know so many of them, and I I referred uh, a client last week to to one of the advisors here and uh in the xy advisor community and uh he responded with this video that he made sort of on loom and the snapshot was him sort of holding you know the name of the client on a bit of paper saying hi you know the name of the potential client and uh he just shoots shoots a video and it was Super good. Yeah, it was just like hit the spot. Something fresh, man. Something creative. And even but though, personal. like I've done videos before, right, right, killed it. Yeah, it, right. It's just so much better than anything that yeah, I'd even done. Out of me. It was just like an idea has got it so. It, it made me so relaxed mm. that I'd given that referral because awesome. the person said, you know, they're in a startup, they got a couple of kids, so it was a young family with, uh, with a startup, um, but also pretty decent income as well, and. Uh, so I and and I knew how much that they wanted to spend on advice and and you know I I knew they didn't want sort of intense advice and, and this person this advisor was perfect and uh, was certainly within the price point. And the way that I the way that I actually talk to clients is I say well one to ten how difficult is your situation and whatever number you end up with just put three zeros at the end and that's what your upfront advice fee is going to be so if you're like a four out of ten i'm, I'm going to expect a, a four thousand dollar advice fee if you're like a six or seven out of ten i'm expecting a six if you're a ten out of ten i'm expecting ten thousand so yeah, right. that that's kind of my gauge that i tell people when when they're asking for advice or, or for an advisor so um yeah like there is absolutely a, going back to the awesome advisor there's absolutely a a, a way I think, and there would be more than just you of the people out there that want to do this type of thing. Um, I would, l- I would really like to actually assist in you helping um, get that community up and running. And, and I've got right. an idea, so we'll take it offline. Oh, good. Let's take that offline mm, then. Mm, mm. Yeah, no. Look, I, we're in a position um, just to riff on that, where um, it's formative days. Um, we're, we're putting together a, a module, kind of like cool, a- man a framework of what are the things you should be looking at based off what we know at the moment. But yep. it's as much, um, you know, learn this as an hour, uh, in an hour as it is, uh, let's hear your thoughts. And this is your this is the course that you're doing for the Yeah, right? this is yep. the Awesome Advisor course. So yep. it'll, it'll be up probably in the next couple of weeks. Boom. Depending when our little bub comes, right? <laughs> um, but no, as, as long as it's due, we've got two weeks till it's meant to be out, so it should be good. Fingers crossed. Right, I know. Um, my wife is, is like, no, get out now. We're, we're ready to go. <laughs> But um, no, the, the intention is a really simple framework. Ask some detailed questions. Like the, the idea of Awesome Advisor is it can apply to any advisor, whether you're a mortgage broker, a lawyer, a personal trainer, anyone who provides consulting. How good's that? Right? Yep. But then we've got to get granular on our industry. Yes. Because we know the industry best. And yep. something that we can benchmark ourselves against, if mm. you're familiar with the idea of B Corp. Yeah, man. You know, like it's not ratified in Australia as a corporate structure, but you can at least sort of tag your name to it. And we're in the process of applying for that at the Fantastic. moment. It will take a bit of time, but yeah, we'll, yes. we'll get there. Um, credit to those advice businesses that are already B Corps. Good on them. Man. Yeah, man. There's a few out there. Um, 
so yes, yeah, something that you can get assessed on and you either pass or you fail, but then there's also like grades of how, how successful, how awesome you are, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, simple framework at the moment, what we got is it's mapped off your, your passion yeah. for what you do, your incentive alignment, which is a lot to do with your pricing structure and the business model. So you, you can be like an epically ethical and talented advisor, but if you're working in a pricing structure which is not well fit for awesome advice, you cannot be an awesome advisor. It just doesn't work. Agreed. And and even when you're making the wise decisions to balance the ethical dilemmas, yes. you know that deep down you got this like edge to push for slightly more cover yep. or to go for this pr- platform over the other platform yep. or to pick you know ETFs versus managed funds or whatever it happens to be. You know? yes. And it's not just about you, it's about your employees and your staff and the yes. people who maybe don't have the same drive or, or discipline that you might have, right? Yes. So passion, um, your incentive alignment, then you need excellence. You just need to be brilliant what you do. And um, and that's not just the financial side. I think it's elements of being an advisor, which are just human, mm-hmm. like knowing some level of personality profiling assessment, um, whether it's Myers-Briggs or the Big Five or DISC, it doesn't matter really. As long as you, you've got a cross-section of how humans interact yes. and what their differences mean for an interaction with you and them, but also with them in the world, you know, if you're going to do any level of psychological assessment with them. And then, um, yeah, following excellence is authenticity. And it's what we sort of chatted about before, about walking the walk and being that example. Um, but it also flows into the way we communicate. Are we authentic about our mistakes? When, like, I've struggled this year a lot with getting SOAs done. Um, the, <laughs> the changeover from licensee to licensee oh, right. has added to it. I thought you meant just in general. You're like, nah, I, I can't be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all this other cool stuff to do. That's right. Oh, look, that's, that's part of it, to be honest, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but more so, it's like having gone from systems and employment to minimal systems with Dover to no systems afterwards, like having to recreate that. And it just, it slowed yeah, me down a lot. Yeah, and my clients yeah. have been very patient, like hat off to you guys. Yeah. Um, but look, having to communicate with them and say, sorry, like I haven't been able to get this done. I know I intended to, let's let's work with that. It's, it's challenging. Yes. When, when you're the man now and it's your business and it's all in your name, yeah. it's very tempting to just like fudge something or pretend like something's not what it is. Um, but to have to fess up and say how things are going is tough. And it's something we've got to do in our industry, I think, more more commonly. So that's the, that's the basic framework. And there's a lot of like, there's 50 questions that we've got in the self-assessment, which you'll be able to do, you know. Yep. I've, got a, I've got a draft version of it up on our website at the moment. So yes. anyone can hop on and have a crack if they're interested. Love the feedback. Um, especially if you think that there should be something else in there or there shouldn't be something that's in there. Really open for that. What's the one thing that the advice industry and the advice community should change to become better? Yeah, but you're talking to this multifaceted thing. Okay, so what I would love to see is if, if in, in a dream world, if we could just like undo every element of our regulation, right? And strip it all back and say, there's no longer a single shred of revenue that comes from product, right? As an advisor, you charge for advice. And if you're recommending and getting remunerated by that, you have to scope it as either a totally different business, like a totally different corporate structure, or at least a totally different service. And there's a clear delineation between the two, right? So you refer to someone, you don't get any kickback. You recommend a product, you don't get any remuneration. If you get offered something, you can take it, but it has to be a totally different structure and you have to sell them as totally different services, right? So that the advice is just advice and nothing more. Then just redesign the regulations around that framework and man, like come up with a four page document that matters. That, that'd be the thing. Yeah. Um, now, can you ever strip it back to that whilst stuff is still going on as it is? I, I don't know. Not from a regulator's point of view, because they're always looking at the bottom end of the barrel. From our point of view, can we? And like, I look at people like Lee Shadell, who I, I read, I haven't actually spoken to her, but I heard that she threw in a license recently, right? She's sort of gone for the coaching front. And, and that's effectively what she's doing. She's like, let's just take all the product recommendation off the table and let's play in the coaching slash quasi strategic recommendation space. I don't know how she manages that dynamic, but I'm sure she's doing it well. Um, And then let's come up with, I'm sure she has documents that she provides to her her girls that are meaningful, that are relevant and, and then kind of rework it from there rather than trying to take what we already have in our SOAs and cull the 45 pages down to whatever we can get them to, you know? Um, So I think, I think from an approach point of view, that's, That'd be what I'd love to see happen. What do you think is the worst decision that could come from the regulatory point of view that could come from the Royal Commission? Oh, that's an interesting question. The worst decision. What would be the worst next step that they could take? 
Oh, probably like shut down the whole industry. That's probably the simplest answer, right? <laughs> like we're we're fed up with you guys. You guys suck. <laughs> that's what everyone's saying. <laughs> you're out. You're all out. Yeah, that's right. I know we were saying you don't need. We didn't need the commission back in the day, but now we do need it, and you're out. <laughs> like the greyhounds. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably the worst. Like I, I'm passionate about our industry. Yeah, it man. matters. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, too many lives that are positively affected. Yeah. Yeah. But that said, like to play the devil's advocate. What would be the worst thing that happened if it shut down the industry? A lot of people would lose a lot of money. Okay, that said, would it really disadvantage our country? I don't know. Like, would people on the high end of things, like, have their lives fall apart? Perhaps there are some niche cases where, like, especially when they've just lost a loved one and they need support and whatever, they'd struggle because they need someone time critical to resolve things. They'll lose a bit of money or pay extra tax here. But what it would force us to do is maybe what I just described before, like start from scratch and start giving only what's valuable to the client. Yeah. And maybe maybe we could make that work. Like I don't want to encourage it, but I, I'm quite an optimist. And I think that you, you shift a, an existing system enough, disrupt it, and, and you always get something good arise from it eventually. It's just that sometimes it takes like a decade or longer. And we don't want to go through that decade if we don't need to. Absolutely. Mate, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I, th- I think the fact that you're about to become a, a data for the first time ever is one of the coolest things, man. So thank you for taking your time out of your day. Um, very interesting topics that we've covered today. And uh, I look forward to seeing, man, like what where your business goes. Mm. Um, if people want to reach out, learn more about you, Purpose Advisory, um, you know, and an awesome advisor, how would they go about doing it? Oh, you can just find me online, purposeadvisory.com.au. Yep. Um, all my deeds should be there. Yep. Or just find me on the face. Yeah, done. Cool, man. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Clayton. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Yeah, good fun.